Coretta Scott Some southern mornings, the moon sits like an orange sliver by the treetops. Coretta and her siblings walked all of five miles to the nearest colored school in the darkness, with the dew dampening their feet. White school bus left a funnel of dust on their faces, but songs and birds of all colors and rich soil where slaves sought freedom steadied them in the face of danger. Over years, learning and freedom took hold of Coretta's soul till she knew in her being that the good Lord intended freedom for the Negro. Martin Luther King Jr., a young preacher, prayed for freedom. Coretta prayed two minds attracted in prayer. Yes, they could do something among the many who thought moral power would overturn Jim Crow. They prayed together, found joy, and were married. According to Gandhi, the humility of millions could free more than just one people. It could free the world, and the world for Coretta and Martin was the South, and they went to Montgomery to their new parish. And the Montgomery bus boycott, just the beginning of a long journey. More boycotts and sit-ins for many, many Negro students felt bound to do something. There were hundreds and thousands left behind. Negroes in shacks and cotton fields living in fear for their lives while they dreamed about the North. Hundreds, then thousands, white and black, marched in Alabama. Carolina, Georgia, and Chicago. A quarter of a million at the March on Washington peacefully singing we shall overcome, and listening to the words that would inspire a nation. Things nature never intended a child to see, haunted them, tragedy accompanies growth, no matter who we are, and the Negroes are no different. But Fivera for the coming vote, and equality pushed Coretta to a peace and wonderment of the Lord. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. Gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, walking up to Freedom Land. Singing, always singing. Coretta Scott King was born in Alabama on April 27, 1927. As a child, Coretta and her brother and sister walked five miles to the nearest school for Negroes, the term used at the time for black people. The bus carrying white children passed them each morning on the way to the white school. This division of the races is called segregation and many states enforce segregation through Jim Crow laws. Growing up in a family of deep faith, Coretta often sang in church, her beautiful voice soaring. At Antioch College, Coretta became interested in the idea of civil rights, or the fair treatment of all people, black and white, as American citizens. She later went on to Boston University to study concert singing. In Boston, Coretta met a theology student, Martin Luther King Jr., who was also interested in civil rights. They were soon married. Martin introduced Coretta to the writings of Gandhi, who believed that nonviolence was the true path to liberation for an oppressed people. One afternoon in Montgomery, Alabama, a black seamstress, Rosa Parks, refused to give up her seat on the bus to a white man. Rosa Parks was arrested, and the South was never the same. Martin organized the Montgomery bus boycott and awakened the whole nation to the injustices of segregation. 
Coretta and Martin were committed to nonviolent resistance. The hallmark of their teamwork was the March on Washington in 1963. They wanted to show the world that America was not the place it claimed to be, that everyone was not, in fact, free. Together, Coretta and Martin raised a family and worked tirelessly to further their vision. Coretta used her musical talents in a series of acclaimed freedom concerts that told the story of civil rights in the United States and also raised funds for the movement. In 1964 and 1965, Congress voted to approve laws that would make segregation illegal and enable blacks to vote. On April 4, 1968, Martin went to Memphis, Tennessee to support striking sanitation workers. Martin was on his motel balcony when a shot rang out. News of his assassination hit the streets, and cities all over the country went up in flames. Coretta was steadfast despite the violence. She left their four children in Atlanta and led the sanitation workers in a march. Until her death on January 30th, 2006, Coretta spent her days speaking out for racial and economic justice and helping to build the King Center, a living memorial that provides programs to educate people about the philosophies of nonviolence. Her courage and vision are an inspiration to all. <laughs>